Come along and take a journey with me while we build this Green Lantern diorama. I bought a frame from Hobby Lobby and as you can see, it's not square, it's not level. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and I got a three quarter inch sheet of plywood, a nice smooth one. And I'm just gonna be marking out the surroundings of the frame. This way I could put it on the table saw and cut it out. When I do put it on the table saw, I am gonna cut it just a little bit bigger than the frame itself. And then I'm gonna sand down the edges to make sure that they're perfectly level or square with the frame. Now I'm all marked out and ready to cut. The frame is pretty close in size. Like I said, I left a little overlap. This way I could sand it down and make it perfect. You can see also I drilled out two holes for our power port and our on off switch. Right here you can see the little lip that we're gonna sand down and get this as perfect as we can. I cut out a piece of pink insulation foam that we're gonna use as the interior of the base. I used my Proxon hot wire cutting table to do this. It's in there. It's not perfect. I am going to go around the edges and seal those up so nothing gets down in between. But the next major thing to do is decide where we're going to put the robot on the base. I want him at the bottom of the base, but I don't want him straight across. So I'm going to put him on a little bit of an angle. And once I have the angle that I like, which is pretty much right here, I'm just going to take my marker, go around him. This way we could trace out where it's going to be and later on bring up the wires underneath the foam so we can light everything up. Also in the top corner, we're gonna add some more rocks and stuff like that. This way we don't have just a dead background. Now that I have it mapped out where I want the robot, I am just gonna take my drill, pick a point in the middle, and I'm gonna drill through the foam and leave a mark at the bottom of the base so I know where to drill the bigger hole so we could get to our circuit board. Now it's time for me to open up a two and a half inch hole at the bottom of the base. This is so I could get to the circuit board. I never enclose the circuit boards inside of a base just in case something happens and I do have to get to it. The next phase of the base is to make channels for the wiring to go underneath. This way when we put the foam down into the main base, we don't have it lifted up. I couldn't find my hot foam cutter, which would have made this a lot simpler to do. I was using my X-Acto knife to make channels down the foam, leading to where the circuit board is going to be underneath the base. Once I had the channels all marked out, I started making lines across with my X-Acto knife and trying to pull the foam out. This was not the best technique because as I got deeper and deeper in, I wasn't able to pull up that foam and make good cuts, so I had to come up with another plan. What I decided to do to make it a little easier is I took my razor blade and I started making lines down the middle to make it smaller, and then I went across and started making little cubes to try to get these pieces out a lot easier than what I was doing with the X-Acto knife. Even with the cubes and trying to to use the razor blade to pull them out, it still wasn't doing a great job of it, so I had to come up with plan C. And plan C was to go into my sculpting tools and find this little hook shape, and it made it so much easier with the cubes just to put it behind the line and start pulling them out like you can see I'm doing here. And now it was time to get back to the main base and get the wobble out of this board. I'm gonna be using Gorilla Glue wood glue for it around the bottom of the frame when I compress it to the three quarter inch plywood. Now that the frame has the glue on it, I am just drilling pilot holes about four to five on each side. This way I can screw in the screws between both sets of wood much easier. Then I'm just drilling down a little bit. This way when I put the screws in, the heads aren't sitting at the top of the boards. They're sunk in a bit. Now the final step is just to pop a screw in each one of these holes to keep the frame tight to the three quarter inch plywood. Now that everything's been screwed together and glued and clamped and set up, we're good to go to move on to the next stages of the build. With the extra work we did with the frame and the plywood, it is now level. The frame doesn't wobble. I took this over to my belt sander and I have all the sides nice and smooth and even. Now we could get on to some more work so we could try to finish up this base and get on to the good stuff. Some people may think this is overkill, but I'm filling in all the holes because later on we're going to add felt to the bottom of this base and we don't want any divots in the felt. At this point, I was just trying to get some more ideas. I printed up a big 3D rock and some smaller ones. This way we could fill in the diorama and it won't be so plain. I didn't want the pink foam to be flat because that's not natural, so I just took my butane torch and I lightly burnt down the foam. This way it gave it ridges and everything like that, and it'll look more natural. Just make sure you're in a well-ventilated area when you do this. Now I'm just going to grab my Mod Podge and I'm going to dump a whole bunch onto the pink foam. I'm going to spread it around and let it dry. I'm using this as a sealer in between the top coats that I'm going to put onto the pink foam. I finished off the frame by adding some 3 quarter inch molding and the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to paint this frame black. I just went over to Home Depot and I got a sample of Bear Dynasty Blackout. No need to spend so much money on something like Black 4.0 when you're just painting a frame. 
Then I just grabbed a textured house roller that I have and I started rolling the paint onto the frame. To be honest, some spots probably would have been easier with a paintbrush, but the roller did make quick work of the whole frame. And of course, if I did the sides and the top, I'm going to do the bottom. I'm not going to leave any parts off, and I'm also going to get inside that hole to make sure everything is covered in black. I have the sides taped off here. This way we could use spray glue and we could put the felt down. But this is where I'm going to make a major mistake with the felt. I used Krylon Low Odor Spray Glue to hold the felt down. And this is the problem. I put the full sheet of felt down all at one time, and then I was going to cut around the edges with the scissor. This did not work out well. When I cut the edges, I couldn't get a perfect shape around the side and a lot of it was ripping up. You can see in the background where I ripped the old felt off. What I did the second time was the smart thing. I measured how big it should be, but I didn't have a big enough piece, so I'm gonna have to do it in two pieces. And the tool you saw in my hand is a rotary tool meant for cutting fabrics. That is the best thing that you can buy to do this type of work. I have both pieces butted up. I just have to take the circle out of the middle. I'm not too worried about the seam because the bottom is just on there so I don't scratch anything. I have the whole cut out, black paint on my hands, but we're getting that much closer to doing more work on this base. Now that the frame is done, it's time to work on electronics, and don't mind my messy soldering. What we're doing here is I'm putting some flux on the pins, the positive and the negative for the power source. This way I could start soldering my wires on. What I'm doing here is I'm pre-tinning the leads. This way when I use my wires that are pre-tinned, it'll be easier to solder both of them together. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing here on my wires. I have flux on them right now. I'm just gonna add a little solder to them. This way they're pre-tinned and it'll make it easier. And you can see also I have my shrink tubing ready to go. This way I don't forget that and have to try to unsolder everything and then put the shrink tube back on. Again, don't mind my soldering abilities. But because they're pre-tinned, it goes on a lot easier. Both are connected. Now I'm just gonna slide that shrink tube up, seal off the post. This way I'm not worried about anything happening to it. I used the same method on both sides, so now both posts are protected. We can run power to this, and that'll power up our effects board, and we're good to go. We have the power jack assembled into the side of the frame. I have extra long wire. This way, I have enough. It's always better to have more than not enough and end up short. Now we're going to start working on our on-off switch. There's two pins. Both these pins are going to take positive power. One from the power adapter coming back to the on-off switch, and the other wire is going to be going to the effects board. Here I did something a little different. Both are pre-tinned, but there's a big enough hole where I twisted the wire through for extra connectivity, and then I added my solder, and then I'll put shrink tubing over that. I have the on-off switch all wired up. We need multiple wires to go to different things. One is for our effects, one is for our board, and one is for our standard lighting or our static lighting. I placed the on-off switch in the frame, but unfortunately there was a gap, so I just took some Bondo, filled in that gap, I'll sand it smooth, and repaint. Here is where I get to start playing with the good stuff, the FX board from Hobby Link International. We're going to have to put a bunch of wires on here, power, ground, three effects, and two jumpers. So far on the board, we have soldered our V in, which is our positive, our ground, which is our negative, our D and E jumpers. These are going to go back to ground, so our A, B, and C effects can take effect when we hit that on-off switch. Each one will go to a different LED and produce a different effect. Now I have all my wires on the board, the A, B, and C, the V in the ground, the D and the E, the 5 volts, that's left empty for future use. I have all my wires tie wrapped and tidied up. I'm just going to run a bead of hot glue down the middle and then I'm going to press those wires into it. This is to keep the wires attached to the board so they stay down when we put the pink foam over. We don't want those popping up and messing up the board in any type of way. Now that these are sealed to the board, I'm just going to take the glue gun and run a few straps over the top. This way it really does stay in place and I have no worries. Everything is all tied together and good to go. Next thing is the major thing and that's to test the LED and make sure that we're getting past. Let's flick that on off switch and see what happens. We should be getting there is our light and you can see it pulsing up and down in a random fashion. The other two lights are going to do the same thing but in different patterns so we'll have a cool effect on the robot. Now the last thing I'm doing is I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue across the bottom inside of the base and we're going to put the pink foam on top of this. It won't hurt the foam and I found out that this Gorilla Glue bonds a lot of things besides wood. It actually bonded the plastic molding that I used on here to the wood. So I'm just going to spread it around and we're going to pop that pink foam in. We have the wires through the hole. We're going to push that foam down, set it up into the glue, and let that dry for 24 hours. So the base is now done, and we get to move on to the good part of starting the desert scene on the base, which will be our next video, so we hope you come check that out, and we'll have some more fun building the Green Lantern diorama.